Hello YouTube, my name is Chris Carpenter and I work with BNB Technologies. We are an organization that specializes in QA and development tools. We don't just specialize in HP tools or Microsoft tools or any of the open source stuff. We specialize in all of it. So today we've got a very interesting video. We're going to use Microsoft Team Foundation Server to trigger a build and we're going to run continuous integration using the Unified Functional Testing Tool from Microfocus, formerly known as HP Enterprise. All right, so let's go over to our environment, the Team Foundation Server. So we are in Team Foundation Server here on the home page. I'm going to very quickly show you how I configured my, my build definitions. So here I've got two different build definitions set up. Uh, these are very basic. We've got our NuGet installer which is for packet management we've got our visual studio build solution uh, build step and then all the way down here all these are very typical and i've got my hp alm execution step here so this one is actually going to pull test cases from the alm server itself and execute these test cases on this build agent or this build server uh, here's all my connection details to alm and then this is uh, one of the test sets that has a couple tests in it. So when I trigger this build, then these test cases should automatically uh, start executing once the build is successful. I've got another one here. This is just to show that I can have my test cases anywhere. I can have them on a file server if I wanted to. So this particular build step goes out and in this instance, we've got our UFT tests right here on this machine locally on the C drive. So this build step will pull those test cases and automatically execute those. All right, so let me show you this in action. Uh, I'm just going to uh, create a comment and then I'm going to check that comment in here. And then I'll click the check in button. So this is, this is essentially uh, adding a change set to my source code management, it's automatically going to trigger a build. And once that build is done, you'll see that UFT actually uh, opens up and it starts doing it. It starts running test cases, and those test cases will go through and uh, validate a bunch of links within our web application. They'll verify that those links actually resolve, and you can see right now it's uh, it's starting up here. Now what this allows us to do is it allows our team that does functional testing to build automated test cases out there in the tool they're choosing. They can do this with uh, unified functional testing. They can do it with Selenium. They can do it with uh, Tricentesis Tosca. Uh, they can do it with all of the tools that they prefer to use. And then we can allow the developers to use the source code management that they want, use the build servers that they want, use like, whatever their technology suite is. They, they have the ability to pick and choose the tools that are going to make them the most productive. And uh, so they've got the, the ability to make those decisions and they're not they're not kind of locked into a single tool. All right, so this this had actually queued, and we can see this little icon here means that it was a part of a successful batched continuous integration. We've got a successful build because we got this little check mark here. So that's great. That was an example of continuous integration. And what if, let's say, the build failed? So I'm gonna I'm gonna queue this build here and show you what happens. Uh, we could set this up to do continuous integration, but I just want to show you how we can manually queue a build and then have it go through the series of uh, continuous integrated test cases as well. All right, so it's just kind of going through the build steps here, and it, now it's uh, the build is successful, and now it's going to run these files from the system. So it found our two different test cases and it should start triggering them. And I've actually configured one of these test cases to fail. So we'll, we're gonna see what happens when a uh, test case is not successful, even though the build itself was a success. All right, so this is the test case that fails. And when it gets posted up into Team Foundation Server, it gives us a task failure 
and we can uh, take a further look into why it actually failed. And we can see that it was a specific test case that had failed. But hey, even better, we could come into our work area and our work area now has a new defect in a new status. So that can automatically create a defect that can be worked and we can uh, dig deeper into why this bit build has actually failed. Well, even, even though the build didn't fail, it was the test case that failed, so as a whole it failed. And the idea is that our developers could get instant feedback. They can go out there and fix any coding mistakes uh, when bugs are introduced sooner. And we all know that the sooner we fix any bugs or defects, the cheaper it is in terms of how much it costs the organization. All right, so just a reminder, my name is Chris Carpenter. I work with BNV Technologies. We specialize in all of these quality assurance and, and DevOps professional services to better QA tools within your organization. So if you have any questions, if you have any ideas on future videos you'd like to see, we can uh, definitely put some together for you. Uh, again, if you want to reach out and contact us, info at bnb.com. Again, Chris Carpenter from BNB. Have a good one, YouTube. Bye.